one of the objectives of this week's lab is going to be to measure resistance. So if you're lucky enough to have your multimeter come in, you could use your multimeter. And in addition to using a multimeter, we're also going to build an ohmmeter. So if we want to measure resistance with the ohmmeter, we turn it to the ohm setting. This is an auto ranging multimeter. It doesn't have ranges. Some of them have ranges that you need to set it to. And right now, you can see it says 0L on there, which stands for overload, and that makes sense because the terminals are not connected. You know, therefore, it's you know thinking it as infinite resistance, so it's overloading. If I touch them, it should go to 0. So notice how, how as, as I did that, like the decimal, decimal place was moving around, and that's because the meter is going through its auto-ranging algorithm, you know, where it starts high, it says, okay, I'm not seeing any resistance at zero, so I'll go to the next one and the next one, and then it ultimately gets down to where the units are in ohms. You can see as I release it, it starts out as mega ohms. That's what the M means, that's millions of ohms. And then it works its way down as I touch the terminals together to kill ohms and finally ohms. So I could measure a resistor. I have one over here plugged into my breadboard. I could use the multimeter to do that. I could touch the multimeter to the wires on each end of the resistor. And you could see there it, it's reading 9.85 kilo ohms. That's k ohms. Or 9,850 ohms. So that's a probably a 10 kilo ohm resistor and I could determine that by reading the color code on here if I saw the video. So it's a brown, black, orange. That's a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So it's within its tolerance. Now of course we don't all have multimeters and today we're going to build a multimeter or an ohmmeter in the lab in order to uh, make measurements and also to learn. So how can we make an ohmmeter? How do we measure resistance? And, you know, so we have a resistor right here and we know if we pass current through the resistor, we're going to get a voltage across the leads, you know, or if we apply a voltage, then we can measure a current going through it. So we can go back to that simple circuit you've probably seen a ton in class right now. If you have a DC voltage source, call it a 5 volt source because that's what we're working with. A resistor and another resistor. This is called a voltage divider circuit. You know, where that's usually like our ground down there connected to the negative terminal. And we're going to call this resistor R sense, so RS for short. And this resistor here is the unknown value. And this is a voltage divider circuit, so we can figure out the resistance R question mark if we know one parameter in the circuit. And that could, or one of the parameters, it could either be the current flowing through the loop, then we can easily find that. Or if we don't know the current, which with our Arduino meters, we don't really have the capability of measuring current easily. But we can measure the voltage at this node right here. Like we could attach our multimeter across the resistor and we get a voltage measurement Vm right there. So we recognize this. This is the familiar voltage divider circuit. Now, you know, let's do a quick analysis of that to figure out how do we get the how do we find that unknown resistor. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the current in the loop. So no current's going to be flowing out of that node for now. So we could say there's one current loop going around the circuit. It's simple. We know that the voltage source divided by the total resistance, Rs plus R question mark, is going to equal I, and you know, which is current around the loop. And we know that we, if we know Vm and R here, that's going to be equal to I also. And we know Vm because our Arduino is going to be measuring it for us. And so now we could take the current out of the equation right there. We just have this equation and we could solve it for our question mark. So we'd have 5 r question mark equals Vm rs plus Vm our question mark, and we could rearrange this a little bit. So we're going to have 5 our question mark minus Vm our question mark equals Vm rs, and now we could divide out the our question marks, 
or sorry, we can divide out the 5 and the Vm. 5 minus Vm. Take those out of there. Just give us an R question mark. And so we solved for it. We could make this a little simpler if we wanted to. It would just be divide everything by Vm, both the numerator and the denominator, and we'd have Rs divided by 5 over Vm minus 1. And this right here is the equation that the Arduino multimeter, the Z-meter, uses to calculate the unknown resistance. So the Rs is something that we have to specify. And in the Z-meter, the way it came from the factory, meaning how I wrote it, I made this 1,000 ohms. And so now we, you know, we could put in that over here. And then VM is the thing that the analog to digital converter is actually measuring in there. So now we could build the circuit. We'll build the circuit on our breadboard. So last week we made the Arduino multimeter, the voltmeter. You know, it has these two leads, you know, the positive and the negative leads. Those go to the A0 pin and the A1 pin, and they're connected by means of this column of holes right there. You probably watch the video. So for our circuit over here, we're going to need 5 volts, and we're going to need a connection to our Arduino. And it turns out that the way I wrote the program, the VN needs to connect to pin A2. And A2 on the Arduino is this pin over here. So it's the pin that's right next to the ground terminal or the negative terminal on the voltmeter. So we also have this RS, the sense resistor, that we have to put in there. So if we wanted to realize this circuit on our breadboard, we need a few things. We need a 1,000 ohm resistor, and I have one right here sitting on my breadboard. So 1,000 ohms is a brown, black, red, gold. So brown, black, red is the, uh, the resistance value, and the gold is telling us it's a 5% resistor. Probably not great, considering that you know, we want a high-precision ohmmeter, but that's okay. We're just learning here. So other thing I might need are some wires. So we have these little jumper kits right here. So the first thing I want to do on my circuit is connect the 5 volts to RS. And a few ways I could do that on the breadboard. And I could, you know, first I want to identify where the 5 volts is coming out of my Arduino. It's right here. And you can see that that 5 volt pin is connected to this row of holes. This green wire right here connects to this thing we call a bus, which is a row, and all of these pins in this row are connected. You probably saw that in the other video. So that's the 5 volt connection right there. So I could plug my 1000 ohm or 1 kilo ohm resistor you know, arbitrarily anywhere along that uh, bus right there, and so now I have this part of the circuit. The 5 volts is connected to the 1000 ohm resistor by this right here. And this is the node right here that corresponds to this node in the circuit. So you can see there's two other things that need to connect there. We need to make that connection to the multimeter, or I mean to the Arduino, and we need to connect to the A2 pin. So you'd pull a jumper wire out of the box, I have a red one here which actually corresponds to two inches long, that's what the red color means. And I could bend it up to fit it into the same column that the resistor is, but I'm going to let the wire govern where the resistor needs to go. So I plugged it in. Now I need to move the resistor to the left a few holes so that it winds up. And now I made that connection. So you can see red wire connected to pin A2, connected to the node over here, which corresponds to this node. And then the resistor is not really part of my multimeter, right? It's not part of my ohmmeter. So they're just really two wires sitting in there, and you know, ideally they'd probably just be some loose wires that go out somewhere, you know, and then the resistor would connect across there. You know, that way you could take those wires and connect them to different resistors on your board. So instead of just plugging a resistor in there that I want to test, I could plug in a test lead. You know, use one of the male male loose jumpers, you know, the, the flexible ones from the kit. And kind of like the multimeter, now I could just probe this around the board. So it's nice and easy to do. And I'll do the same thing for this wire. That needs to just connect back to ground. And I'm using the same color ones because the 
the direction doesn't matter, like polarity doesn't matter when measuring resistance. So I follow my ground, it's coming out of the ground pin, it's going into the blue bus, the one up here. Follow that down, and just for, you know, form, I'm going to plug this in so it's kind of in line with the other green wire. That just gives me a little bit of a spatial sense of what the wires do. Like these are a pair, those two are a pair, so it just organizes things, which gets important when you're working on circuits. So I have my circuit now, and if I wanted to measure resistance with the circuit, I could go up to one of these resistors that's plugged into the breadboard here, like this one, plug into the same columns, and now I completed the circuit. So current flows out of the 5 volts, goes through the bus, goes through the 1K resistor, through the green wire, through this resistor, which happens to be a 10K resistor, into the other green wire, back to ground, and into the ground on the Arduino. Now, how are we going to run this? I'll, I'll switch to my screen view over here, and we have the, uh, the Arduino Z-Meter software up and running. I have to connect my Arduino to my computer by the USB port, make sure I'm on the proper COM port. Let's see which one it is. It looks like it should be on COM6. Now, if I go over and run the serial monitor, if the Z-Meter software is loaded, you can see right now it's starting to run. So it defaults to measure voltage. And here you notice you know, it's running away from me, but it says type R if I want to measure resistance. So I could put an R in there, hit enter, now it's switching to resistance measuring mode, and it's giving me a value for the resistance. So if we go back to the breadboard, you'll notice that, you know, that's a 10 kilo ohm resistor, and we're measuring 9953 ohms, you know, or 9953 ohms, which is pretty close to 10K. So I have another resistor on my breadboard over here, I could plug in to this resistor. And it's giving me a number 2.166 ohm, kilo, or 2,166 ohms. And then the color code is red, 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 which is 2, 2 times 10 to the 2 times 100 is 2,200, or 2.2 kilo ohms. And I'm getting a number of 2.166 kilo ohms on my Z meter, so things are working out. So I could try some other resistors in there. So this resistor is a brown, black, blue, that's a 10 million ohm resistor, and I'll plug it in. And when I do this, you'll notice that you get an out of range high reading on the meter. So the problem is, is that because the 1K sense resistor is so small, if we put in this 10 million ohm resistor right here, the resolution of the electronics built into the Arduino is not really good enough to precisely or accurately really for that matter measure the value of a resistor so large. Kind of a good rule of thumb is maybe you can go a hundred times or two hundred times larger than your sense resistor with these kind of simple electronics before you're going to run into trouble. So you're only going to be able to measure certain resistors but if you really wanted to change that range you could simply put in a different value sense resistor and if we go back to the code you'll see that in the upper lines of the code, there's a, uh, a definition for sense resistor ohms. So literally, if I wanted to make that you know, work at a higher resistance range, I could say put in a 100 kilo ohm resistor or a 10 mega ohm resistor, and then recompile the code, and then the software or the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the code you know, has the math right here to take that into consideration. So that's an introduction to our you know, most basic ohm meter right here, and it's uh, you know, hopefully you'll enjoy making it and be able to make some measurements with it. And definitely compare it if you have it to one of your you know, commercially available multimeters and see how things work out.